guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to A Game of Thrones and Thrones. Now today I'm going to be doing a book haul and they all fit in this bag. I think that's going to be a new thing, pulling books out the bag. <laughs> but we'll go for the ones on top. Now if you've seen my TBR video uh, that went up on Friday, today's Monday, you'll see that I picked up two two books that were that hadn't officially been hauled so these are Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson and Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. And I think they were the only two that pulled out that I didn't that hadn't been hauled. But we'll just go through the rest of it anyway. Uh, so we have Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. Uh, basically in this one Cinderella was it was a real person and it's been 200 years since she found her prince. Now all of the girls in the country have to attend these balls uh, to find a husband. If they don't find a husband they disappear uh, but our main character Sophia doesn't want that. She wants to go, she doesn't want to even go to the ball. Uh, she just wants to stay with her best friend I think. Um, so that's interesting and I think if I'm not mistaken I think she actually meets up with two of the real Cinderella's descendants as well <clears throat> sorry I have a bit of tickly cough um, so yep we've got that one and then we have Starsight which is the sequel to Skyward and because this is a sequel I don't want to talk too much about it <clears throat> uh, but basically in Skyward we meet Spencer who has always dreamed of being a pilot and um, she's the daughter of a famous pilot although infamous might be the better word her father is has been branded a coward and i think he was shot um for desertion or executed for that but Spencer has always lived with that hanging over her but she believes that her father wasn't a coward she believes there's more to it but obviously she knows her dad um outside of battle zone outside of what the people in charge see uh, but we have the Krell, we have the Krell who are the enemy. They're sort of keeping our humans, <coughs> our humans on this planet, and yeah, everything. We obviously find out um, that there was more to the story that Spencer's always been told in the first book, and then in the second one. Oh my god, did the first one end on such a twist, such a cliffhanger that I really need to know what happens in it. And I understand in this one that we get more Doomslug. We get that better description of Doomslug and more Doomslug content. Never thought I could like a slug. Uh, but then we, now the rest of them aren't in any particular order. But I did pick up uh, the next two books yesterday. So no, day before. Halloween. Uh, so they do just count. And they're perfect Halloween reads, actually. Uh, we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Um, again, this is quite well known, but this is the Waterstones edition, which has the exclusive bonus content, and it has the sprayed edges. Uh, but basically, Alex is, a, is invited to Yale, uh, and as a freshman student, she's a dropout and su sole survivor of a horrific unsolved crime. Um, but her, f her scholarship, her free ride, comes with a catch, because nothing's free. Um, but she's been tasked with monitoring Yale's secret society, um, you know, to keep a, keep a track on it. Because, um, you know, they, they tamper with magic, they raise the dead and sometimes go after the living and I do know that this one has triggers for pretty much everything um, I mean I'm not normally affected by that but if you are just keep a, just keep a, an eye out for that next one is another gorgeous exclusive edition again Waterstones exclusive and that is The Deathless Girls by Kieran Melville, Millwood Hargrave oh, I've just seen the end papers uh, but this one tells the story of Lil and Kizzy who end up being Dracula's brides. Um, I don't think that's the secret. Uh, no, it's not, a st it's not a spoiler, it's so on the back. Um, a bit fluffy. 
Uh, but basically, Lil and Kizzy seem... I think they might be Romany, they might be Gypsy. Um, but on the eve of their Divining Day, which is obviously something quite mystical, um, and they're 17, they are trapped... they are captured by Boya Valkar, um, forced to work as slaves, deprived of everything, until they meet Mira, who gives Lil someone to love. Um, but then they hear about the mythical dragon, more monster than man who accepts girls as gifts. <coughs> Let's see, yep, yeah, obviously the dragon might be Dracula. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of a, a prequel, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Then we have another book that has been doing the rounds lately, and that is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Um, Brie, another another survivor story, Brie. Um, with, her mother dies, um, so she just wants to run, she wants to escape, and she ends up in a pre-college sort of situation, I'd say. Um, but then she be she witnesses a magical attack, and then ends up getting infiltrated. She infiltrates this society, for, and from what I've heard, they are a little bit anti-black. Um, well, obviously, our main character is gorgeous black. Um, but and this is a our fairy telling. I have read uh, Once in Future, which is also an our fairy telling. Uh, so I've got high hopes for for this one. I do like the King Arthur myths. And then we have the first two books in a trilogy, I believe. And that is the Mirror Vi Mirror Visitor series. Where we have book one, which is a min Winter's Promise. And book two, which is The Missing of Clay de Lune, both by Christelle Davos. Now, this is book two, so I haven't looked at it. Because um, obviously, don't want to get don't want the spoil what's on the back of here, spoil what's on the back of here, or in here. Um, but from what I understand, we have these floating planets called Arcs. Um, and we meet Ophelia, who is a bit of a misfit and a, and a genius. Um, she can read the pasts of objects and the ability and has the ability to travel through mirrors. She lives on one arc um, called Anima, um, but then she is promised to Thorn, who is obviously from a different. Oh, is that deckled? That feels deckled. I think that's deckled edges. Yeah, I think I think that's deckled. Anyway, back on track. Um, so obviously we will follow her going from Anima to this other to this other arc and going from there. Who translated this? Hill Hildegard Cell. I'm assuming she read, she's also translated that one as well. Yep, Hindergard cell. So, so we have them too. Then we get on. Have I got more paperbacks? Yeah, I've got one more paperback. And um, that is another book you made me buy it book. And that is The Final Empire, uh, which is book one of the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. Um, and in this one, it's basically a what happened if the Dark Lord won, if the prophesied hero didn't turn up or lost. Um, so the Lord Ruler owns the world. Uh, for a thousand years the ash fell, for a thousand years the Skars lived in misery and lived in fear. For a thousand years the Lord Ruler reigned with absolute power and ultimate terror, divinely invincible. Um, every attempt at revolt has ended miserably. Uh, so then, obviously, in these kind of stories, you always have that little bit of hope. Um, this one it depends on the cunning of a brilliant criminal mastermind and the courage of an unlikely heroine, a scarce street urchin, who must learn to master alamancy, the power of a mistborn. So, from what I understand, it, the magic, si the magic system in the mistborn series is based on awe. Or elements of metal, you ingest them and you get different powers, abilities based on what what it is that you've um, taken. 
and if and I have read Skyward, so if his fantasy is anything like his sci-fi, I'm gonna I'm gonna join the ranks of Brandon Sanderson lovers on BookTube, and I'll be <laughs> promoting them hopefully. Now the next book, there is a bit of a story. Um, it is the Fairy Loot May book, which is Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Melissa Bashadust. And my mailbox won't listen and Fairy Loot were amazing in getting it getting it out, but obviously with COVID and delays and everything, it has only just arrived. Uh, but so excited. Uh, so with this one, it is based on I wanna say Iranian Persian I think it's Persian mythology. Um but we we have Soraya who's lived who is a cursed princess. She believes um she's poisonous to the touch. Um her twin brother gets married and she, Soraya needs to decide if she wants to step out or not. Um but there's a in the dungeon there's a demon who holds the answers um, but obviously Soraya needs to understand who she is and why she is the way she is and the alternative cover to this one is absolutely gorgeous and I think our main character may have wings but it's absolutely stunning and it has the it's green can you see that? It's like a silvery silver. Silvery silver. Oh, very funny. Very clever. <laughs> and then it has this like mint, mint pea green on, on the edges. So then we have this book here, which was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. And it's from Aluma Crate. And it is a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Uh, which is lesson one of the Scholomance, and this has been doing the has been doing the rounds on BookTube. Um, but basically, with this one, it's the story of an unwilling dark sorceress who is destined to rewrite the rules of magic. Um, school is unlike anything you've seen before. It's very dark, very regimented. No teachers, no holidays, and friendships are just for strategy and. Odds of survival are never never equal. Once you're in, you either <laughs> you either graduate or you die. Um, L is our main protagonist, and she's got a bit of a dark side to her. She has a really strong dark power um, that would definitely keep her safe in the school, but she might accidentally kill the students. And obviously, L is she doesn't want to do that. But it has, look, look at that end papers, it has a map. That looks a bit like the Colosseum. And there's one on the back as well. So, haha. -ha. Oh, I just realised. <laughs> Should look at these more often underneath the dust jacket. It says the Scrollamans isn't a forgiving place. And then we have just the symbol from the front, from the cover on the front. Then we have a couple more hardbacks that I bought recent um, bought last month. We have the Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu, and this is the sequel to the Eldest Curses, which I haven't read. So obviously, I haven't looked at the um, synopsis of this one. But from what I understand of the Red Scrolls of Magic, which is Eldest Curses Book 1. Um, Magnus has discovered a cult, or he created a cult or something. But look, this edition has the alternative cover. And it's just, it's just white underneath, nothing, nothing special there. So we'll just put that back. This is why I don't read hardbacks. Never get the loose jackets back on. <laughs> there we go. And two, two more. We have the Faithless Hawk 
by Margaret Owen, which is the sequel to The Merciless Hulk, which was one of the first sub book subscription book, one of the first book subscription services books that I actually read. And with this one, it's obviously a sequel. Um, but I have read the first one, so I'll try to keep the um, spoilers in this minimum. Uh, but we have a fee who is a member of the Crow, which is the because this world is set in castes and each caste is named after a bird um, your ruling class are the phoenixes your guards are hawks and your clean, your dead your um, dead pickers your body cleaners are crows um, so we follow Fee who is in line to take over as the chieftain of her of her family the crows and we follow her, we follow the prince, or the emperor, I think he's a prince, oh, who is obviously a phoenix, and his look-like guard, who is the hawk. And we follow their journey. Somebody is out to kill the prince. Um, or the prin yeah, somebody is out to kill the prince, but the prince has committed um, pretend suicide. Everybody thinks he's dead. Him and his guard are on the run, and they meet up with Fee who charges them with a bargain and they still and we learn more about how the magic of this world works why fee and her family have to do what they do and um, despite everybody looking down on them because obviously crows are carrion carrion eaters and the crows people are looked down as that because they do the dirty jobs so obviously this is a sequel and because it's called the Faithless Hawk, I am getting a little bit um, scared of what's, what's going to happen. <laughs> but the last book is again a anticipated read, and it is a chunky monkey. And that is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. Now, I was going to wait until it came out in paperback, just simply because it would be easier to read. Um, I think it's like 700 pages. But I went into Forbidden Planet. And it is signed. And I absolutely adore er the Aragon um, Boost the American Cycle. So I couldn't resist. Uh, but this one is completely different. It's more sci-fi. Um, Kira Nefavres is our main character, our main protagonist. She's dreamed of life on new worlds, and she's weakened a, a nightmare. Um, in the middle of a routine survey mission on an uncol uncolonized planet, Kira finds an um an alien relic. First, it's a good thing, you know, it shows life. Um, but then. The dust around her seems to move, war is erupting, and Kira is launched right into the middle of it. Um, first contact isn't all what she imagined, and events push her to the very limits of what it means to be human. Um, Earth and colonies stand on stand upon the brink of annihilation, but Kira is, you know, the only hope. And the tagline... Is there a good tagline on here? I can't find it. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so we have that. Um, we have some gorgeous spacey end papers, and there's the cover. We have the end papers on that one. And do I attempt to pick these up? Um, yeah, why not? Let's uh, let's pick them up and watch them go flying. This is why I use a pack. This is why my buckles come out of the bag. Ready and uh, ah, <laughs> managed it. Just yeah, someone put these down now. Oops. Yeah, so that's all that I bought this month. Um, let me know if you've read these books. If you think there are any I should prioritise over the others. Um, and let me know some of what you've bought this month, and if and if we've bought the same thing. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.